So we have today's presenter is Niklas Nilsson, our sales manager, and he is supported by Carl Kuming, our material development manager. And by this, I will hand over the word to, to Niklas. Hi, everyone. My name is Niklas Nilsson, and along with my colleague Carl Cumming, we're going to lead you through today's webinar, Green Rubber, Turning Waste into Resources. To start with, I would like to give you all a short introduction of the Trellebo Group, which is a world leader in engineered polymer solutions. The company was founded in 1905 and are today represented in more than 50 countries around the world. The head office is based in Trelleborg in the south of Sweden. Today, there are more than 120 manufacturing facilities with more than 24,000 employees, with an annual sales of 3.46 billion euros. To explain the broad portfolio of the materials and products that the Trelleborg Group are responsible for, we usually say that we produce and deliver products from space to seabed. Next slide, please. But who are we then, standing before you having this webinar? Well, we are, of course, a part of the group, but we represent Trelleborg Mixing Forschheder, which is one of the 120 manufacturing facilities within the group. We are based in Forschheder, and of course, everyone knows where that is. Not? <laughs> well, if not, we could say it's in the southern parts of Sweden. We produce rubber compounds and cable compounds that is delivered globally. Our portfolio contains customer unique and standard products. And we have today more than 300 active rubber compounds. We have our own research and development unit which gives us the ability to produce unique solutions together with our customers. Depending on color, volume, and other parameters, we can decide to place the production in our small or our big mixer. Today, we are 65 employees serving 25 countries around the world. We strive to give our customers a greener option, and we strongly believe that this is the future. The Trelleborg Group announced earlier this year a new internal goal referring to CO2 emission. We call it 50 by 25 and means that in 2025 all Trelleborg facilities should have reduced their CO2 emissions with 50% from today's level. Next slide, please. As I mentioned on the previous slide, we have our own research and development unit. Six people dedicated to find the best solution for you. When partnering with us, you receive a polymer expert that have a long history of experience within rubber. We can deliver a wide range of black and colored compounds. Our experience is spread over a large number of polymers and applications. To be able to deliver a compound that you need, we keep a tight communication with our customers to find solutions that are customized. As we all know, the raw material situation right now are tough. With technical assisting service, we can find and suggest alternative raw materials, which have helped many of our customers today from standing still in production. Next slide. As you all might know, a basic EPDM compound consists roughly of 10 to 15 ingredients divided into five main categories. Polymer, 30%, oil, 20%, carbon black, 30%, whitening and chalk, 10, and others, 10 percentage. Today, everyone is talking about sustainability. What can we do to help the climate? Well, there are many sustainable choices available. Bio-based polymers. Today, many companies are trying to develop new bio-based polymers. Perhaps a sugarcane-based polymer could be an option for your compound. Recycled carbon black. 
by unique technology, you are today able to recover high quality carbon black from end of life tires. Bio-based oils. Today there are many options in recycled or bio-based oils. Perhaps could a vegetable oil be an option for you? Devulcanized rubber. Well, by granulating vulcanized rubber and rework it under a certain control temperature, you will receive a devulcanized mass. This material could then be mixed in some certain percentage into new compounds. We are today working within all of these categories and are more than happy to discuss or help you to find your perfect match. But to go into details in all sustainable options would take too much time. Why we have chosen one important segment to focus on in this webinar. Recycled carbon black. Many producers have tried to switch from virgin carbon black to recycled without any success. In some cases, they have been able to switch from um, sm some smaller amounts of virgin carbon black to recycled. Trollenborg mixing Forscheda have succeeded to change not only 50%, but 100%. This compound, along with the case study, will be presented later on in this webinar. But let us start looking at what recycled carbon black really is. Every minute, we produce 3,300 tires around the world. When our tires are worn out, they turn into scrap, piled in huge piles. In the warmer regions of our world, these piles of tires collect water inside of them, which is a nursery for mosquitoes and malaria, which creates huge problems around the world. Most of the tires are finally burned. Burning scrap tires are 13,000 more toxic than coal-fired emissions. Around the world, 3,300 used tires are produced every minute. This is a huge problem for the environment, one which every country deals with differently. The emission norms are maybe stricter in Europe. Worldwide, the industry is looking for solutions to reuse old tires. We don't let waste go to waste. Our green rubber will turn waste into resources. Every year, we add 18 million tons of end life tires to the world's waste. This has got to end. Today, we can recycle carbon black out of these scrap tires and reuse the carbon black in new compounds, which we are calling green rubber. How do you retrieve carbon black? Well, in the, rise, in the recycling process, pyrolysis, the tires are separated into steel, gas, oil, and carbon black. Approximately 30% of the tire is made up of carbon black, which is recovered in the pyrolysis. After pyrolysis, there are several post-processing steps uh, where the steel are separated from the carbon black. The carbon black is then milled to ensure correct particle size distribution. All of the recycled components, steel, gas, oil and carbon, are then reused in new products and materials. Some key benefits. Reduced CO2. Today, everyone is talking about the CO2 emissions. How can we reduce them? The European Union has adopted ambitious new targets to curb uh, climate change with the pledge to make them legally binding. Under a new law agreed between member states and the EU Parliament, the bloc will cut carbon emissions by at least 55% by 2030 compared with 1990. By start using recycled carbon black, we take a small step in the right direction. Reduces the world's waste. 
As mentioned earlier, we add 18 million tons of end-life tires to the world's waste. By recycling them, we are helping the environment and reduce the world's waste. Eliminates toxins from burning tires. Chemical compositions tests are on waste rubber show that it contains numerous toxic and high risk air pollutants. And once burned, they can become airborne. By recycling the old tires instead of burning them, we can help the environment. Reduces the use of fossil fuel. Alternative renewable sources such as recycled carbon black eliminate the pollution that accompanies fossil fuel usage. We contribute to circular economy. We give the tires a second chance by recycling them. They will once again become new important cornerstones in new products. We can help our customers make a difference. The aerospace segment asks for green components. The automotive business accounts for 40% of the global EPD and polymer consumption and are today searching for sustainable solutions. Building and construction business needs to support a circular economy. Majority of mines are operating 24 seven in tough environments. A lot of wear, wear, parts, wear parts being used that are made of rubber for example, lining and screening media. Green rubber is a good solution to help reducing waste, being one of the top priorities for mining companies. In railway, rubber are used for anti-vibration and in different sealing solutions for windows, doors, etc. Here, green rubber can be a good sustainable option. Transportation by sea becomes more and more important. The industry is searching for sustainable solutions for fenders and docking equipment, where green rubber could play a key role. Market share. Today, you can gain market share by having a green alternative, but for the future, it is a necessity for survival. Sustainable solutions. Together, we can find green solutions that are functional for customers' applications. What if we could help our customers getting it right from the start? Well, today, everyone is talking about green cities, circular economies, and CO2 reduction. Our customers are today facing challenges like growing uh, demands for eco-friendly products and solutions, electrification of vehicles, airplanes, and marine vessels, smart and green cities, environmental regulations. Better business. Every little part counts if you want to stay ahead of competition. By using our green rubber, you are strengthening your offering and competitiveness against your customers. Better function. It's all about making the right choice from the start. We can help you with customized solutions where the green rubber is in focus. Better sustainability. Sustainability is good for your business. All substances in our green compounds are of course REACH compliant, protecting people and the environment. We are together reducing the CO2 emissions. Together, we are turning waste into resources. To underline the information you have been given in this presentation, we want to present a case study. Together with the company producing rubber membranes, Trelleborg Mixing Forsheda produced a green rubber compound that was used for their rubber membrane for flat roofs. If we look at the carbon black, Trelleborg Mixing replaced the virgin carbon black and chalk in the original recipe with 100% recycled carbon black from worn out tires. Field tests had to be made. After producing rubber membrane for flat roofs with our green compound, field tests 
were made, and the green rubber fulfilled the roofing grade specifications, which means that the field test was approved. But what about the cost? We managed to keep the green rubber cost neutral in this compound. And since the recycled carbon black isn't depending on the oil market, the price fluctuations are reduced. But what about the potential? Well, for this customer, and uh, this customer is today using several thousand tons per year of this specific compound. 1,000 tons reduces the CO2 with 620 tons. 620 tons of CO2 can be compared to approximately 119 laps around the globe by car. How green rubber can help reducing CO2? By using bio-based recycled materials to some extent, we are all helping the environment. Our natural resources will cease if we don't start doing something now. Nobody can do everything, but everyone can do something. Let's start building the rubber industry for the future. So, the world is full of challenges that can be solved in a better way. Why don't you contact us with a new or existing compound so we together can transfer them into a more sustainable alternative, not only by using recycled carbon black, but also by looking at all other possibilities to make your compound as green as possible. Thank you so much for listening. And now I think we have some questions, hopefully. Thank you, Niklas. So we have a um, couple of questions coming in. So the first question, uh, can this green rubber be available in all compounds? Um, it can be available in most compounds, and most compounds can be made more sustainable. The actual level depends on the technical demands, the specification, and what raw materials we choose to use. Thank you. Uh, we have a second question. Um, what is the drawback using recycled carbon black? Um, there's not a one-to-one -one replacement with, with virgin carbon black, which makes it more difficult. And you have to uh, adjust the recipe and the ingredients. Uh, the grades are often less reinforcing than the hard carbon blacks, which, which also makes it slightly, slightly more difficult. So those, those are some of the, re of the, of the drawbacks. Thank you. Um, the question, um, are there different kinds of recycled carbon black? There are a number of players in the in the recycled carbon black mar market, and they uh, differ a bit, and and that depends, of course, on the on the selection of their feedstock and their pr process. So as I said before, there's not a one to one equivalent to to virgin car carbon black. Thank you. And the, and there there are not as many grades as as virgin carbon black. There are a lot of different different grades there, while recycled car carbon black is more limited. Yeah, now we have a question related to toxic chemicals. So where is the toxic chemicals after the paralysis? Not, I think they uh, are gathered in the in the oil, but it's not um, like burning tires. The, the temperature there is uncontrolled and a lot higher. So uh, there's there's a lot less toxic chem chemicals. 
And uh, as far as I know, the re recycled car carbon black is quite quite clean. Okay. A question related to um, bio-based polymers and fillers. So do you have bio-based polymers and fillers available? Yes, there are bio-based um, polymers available. Um, we've been looking at bio-based uh, fillers too, but the reinforcing level has been quite quite low low there, so we haven't got any final compounds there yet. But we are con continuously working with it. Yeah, we've got a question. Uh, what is your next step to use this? Yeah, um, yeah, we have been working with with a couple of customers, and we of course would like to start more material development pr projects together with, with customers, so we can launch it into more compounds. It's not a one-to-one -one replacement, so you have to look at every compound and fine fine tune tune them so it works with with uh, yeah, recycled carbon black or bio-based uh, materials. Yeah, as we as we said in the presentation, we, we are we welcome customers to come with their with their new or existing compounds, so we together can look in in how in how we can create them more greener. Thank you. Um, question related to tires. So, can tire makers use the recycled carbon black as well? We are a bit limited in tires, but Michelin I know is working with it and they are building a plant for for tires. So yes, but I don't think that they can exchange a hundred percent. They will change exchange a smaller portion. But since the volume for tires is so big, it will still be substantial volumes. <clears throat> Now a question related to CO2 footprint. So what is the CO2 footprint from the bio-based polymers? Uh, according to data, I have a, a regular EPDM will generate three to three and a half kilograms of carbon dioxide side per kilogram of polymer, including packing and transport. While a bio-based um, same equivalent polymer will gen generate 0.8 to 1.8 kilograms, including packing and transport. So there's a, a re reduction of about two kilograms of car carbon di dioxide per kilogram of polymer. So it's quite quite big numbers. Um, is the CO2 leakage considered in the shown CO2 savings when the energy is created for the pyrolysis? Yes, that is, they've taken no, care of the full uh, life cycle analysis. Sorry, can you repeat it, uh, Paul? As far as I know, they've, they've investigated the full life cycle analysis. And there's there's no extra en energy add added once the process has started because the gas that is ev evaporated from the tires is then used to to heating heating the py pyrolysis process. Thank you. I think that was the the last question. Okay, there is one more coming in or a couple of more. So. Um, how much does the recycled carbon black affect compound properties compared to using 100% carbon black? Yeah, it's difficult to say, but say that you get 70-80% of the original one. Depends, of course, on the compound and what the original carbon carbon black is. That's where you have to try to find fine tune your recipe. Okay, then a question related to: Is there other effects to 
compounds that just change in color grade. So the color is the same and yeah, for a couple of years ago there was a quite a nasty smell to the recycled carbon carbon black, but they have got got rid of that. So this you don't notice that that much. Okay, we have more questions coming in. Uh, is there a positive or negative effects on the pH levels when using recycled carbon black? The pH levels are actually very low on the recycled carbon carbon black in the tests that that we have seen. So that is that is positive. I think actually Lena also had a question here. Maybe you wanted to uh, ask Lena. Oh, so uh, there was uh, two questions from one of our guests that was still uh, not answered to. Uh, let's see if I can go back. Go back. So we have one of our guests call, uh, whose name is Benjamin. He has uh, firstly saying a great presentation and he has two questions and uh, one is about uh, the uh, Envira system uh, which we have worked with for the recycled carbon black and also about um, the supplier base uh, if we have uh, evaluated, uh, evaluated a bigger uh, supplier base. And if I'm uh, interpreting your question wrong, Ben, and John, just uh, let me know by unmuting yourself. Uh, yes, we have looked at other suppliers too. We have, we have worked together with a number of different suppliers and, evalu and evaluated them. And some of them have been performed quite well and others have been quite, quite bad. So yes, we have, we have looked at a number of different suppliers yeah. And the quantities, um, yeah, there's a couple of thousand tons of available, as far as I know, in the mid, mid or the near range. Uh, there's still the recycled carbon black available, and uh, a lot of the players have got very ambitious investment plans forward here. So uh, depends a lot on how, how these kick on uh, how 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 the uh, how how much carbon black will be in in the market okay um, Benjamin had a second question as well and I think it touches a bit what you mentioned about Michelin and the and the factory that uh, they are building for recycling tires uh, I think you mentioned that the quantities recycle will be only part partial and the amount of tires that are then given a second life is so big so the amount of such is nothing that will be covered totally by my michelin and uh, he's adding to his question on this recycling um, uh, topic that if trello is looking at uh, creating such a circle or recycling plant ourselves yep. As far as I know, we, we have not had plans to to um, start a recycling plant, but we have looked at recycling our scrap material. I mean, of course, other rubber materials and tires can can be par paralyzed. So there there's a way of, of using that and then closing that loop. But of course, um, uh, collecting uh, up uh, used rubber parts can also be something that can be used in future, but a lot of the rubber parts that are used are, are used for 10, 20, 30, 40, even 50 years. So it's, so it's, a, it's a question of gathering that, that material in that case. But tires is of course easier to work with because the volumes are so big. So I think that was the, the two questions from Benjamin. So uh, I hope you got an answer to your questions, Benjamin. Thank you, Lena, for jumping in. So um, that was the, the last question. So we're on spot on time. So, so the last thing I would like to, to remind you as well that 
could you please take a couple of minutes to uh, fill in our questionnaire? We would appreciate to get the feedback on the webinar and then uh, please also stay tuned. We will have more interesting webinars coming up, more commercial, more technical ones. So with this, I will say thank you for um, for attending the webinar and thank you to, to Niklas and Carl. And thank the you. questionnaire will be posted in the chat. Thank you much. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank bye -bye. you too. Thank well you. Done. Bye bye.